Hello YouTube and welcome back. In today's video, we're going over some Wireshark filters and I will be using a challenge from TryHackMe to demonstrate the scenario of using Wireshark filters. The challenge name is Advent of Cyber 2 and the name is The Grinch Really Did Steal Christmas and this challenge is about using Wireshark filters so we'll be using the filters to answer the questions. But before talking about the scenario, Let's dig deep about some filters that we will be using in the, uh, for the case uh, we are having. So first thing, how to filter for protocols. So if you want to look for specific traffic uh, that match specific protocol, we would use only the name of the protocol. For example, if I want to look for SSH traffic, I would use only SSH as a filter to filter out traffic that is not SSH. The same for SFB, same for FTP, same for HTTP or HTTPS. Now if you want to filter for ports, so all you have to do is to know just if the port, the port number and the type of the port, if it does belong to TCP protocol or if it does belong to UDP. For example, if you want to filter for uh, port number 21, which equals, which is for uh, HTTP, FTP, you would type TCP dot port equal 21. Same if you are filtering for UDP port, you would type UDP instead of TCP and the port number. Simple and easy. Now, if you want to filter for IP addresses, so sometime you want to look for traffic originating from a specific IP. So in this case, you want to look for traffic that has your IP address as a source IP address. So source IP address means that this IP address or the device having this IP address is the one originating or sending the traffic, sending the packets. So we would look for that IP with this formula. Now, if you want to look for the IP address that is receiving the packet, we would type destination. All right. Now, let's see how we can filter for HTTP requests. And this is very useful if you are doing troubleshooting or if you want to look for uh, HTTP pages in the response code. So we would use HTTP request.method as a formula. And then we put the equal sign, double equal sign, and here we specify the type of the HTTP request we want to filter. So get, post, and head. And we have other filters, but most, most probably, you only need to filter for get and post. Okay, all right. Now let's head to the challenge. So we have three packets captures. Okay, and we're gonna be opening them one by one in Wireshark to answer the questions. So here's the Wireshark. I'm gonna open pickup one. Okay, great. Now here, let's go over the questions and answer them. So on pin pickup one dot pickup in Wireshark, what is the IP address that initiates ICMP ping? So technically here, we want to filter for ICMP traffic to be able to see the IP addresses that are exchanging the ICMP traffic. So here we are talking about filtering protocols. So to filter protocol, we simply type the name of the protocol. So here. In the case of ICMP, I would type ICMP, ICMP, and enter. Here you see all of the packets that have been exchanged between IP addresses. In the question, we're looking for the IP address that has initiated the ICMP request. So we would look over the source, okay, because we're looking for the IP that initiates. And we see here that the first packet originates from 10, 11, 3, 2, and the destination is 10, 10, 15, 52. So here the IP address is 10, 11, 3, 2. And this is the answer. If we only wanted, next question, if we only wanted to see HTTP GET request in our pcap1.pcap file, what folder would we use? So here, filtering for HTTP request. So we type HTTP dot request dot method and we specify the request. So in our case, it is get. Here we see all of the HTTP get requests. And as you can see, 
in all the packets, the source or the uh, the IP address is always the source here, and we see the destination. So here, because we're talking about get request only, so in the source column we see only one IP. The selection column we see only one IP, indicating that these are the get requests. So next question is based on that. Now apply this filter to pick up one dot pick up in Wireshark. What's the name of the article that the IP address 10101667 visited? So here, as you can see, the source column contains the packets originated from the IP mentioned in the question. Now all we have to do is to find the name of the article. Okay, so we need to look for or look through the packets, the get packets. All right, and Note, you need to expand the hypertext transfer protocol section here, expand the row here to be able to see the full URL that was requested by the IP address. By, by inspecting the full URL, we will be able to get an idea of what is the page that has been requested by the IP address and hence increasing the chances that the article name is written in the URL. So let's see here. So as, as you can see, if we scroll through these requests, we see here request to JavaScript file. We are not interested in that. Let's go down. Okay. Now, as you can see here, in packet number, uh, they, are, they are not numbered here. Ah, oh, packet number 475. We see here the referrer HTTP. The full URL contains posts and reindeer of the week, which marks the name of the article. All right, next question. Let's begin analyzing pickup to dot pickup. Look at the captured FTP traffic. What password was leaked during the login process? So here we open the next pickup file. File, open, pickup two. Okay, now here we want to filter for FTP traffic to be able to see the password that has been leaked. Now the reason the password is visible in this capture because FTP traffic transfers the packets in plain text. That's why we are able to see all of the details that have been sent or exchanged between the host and the destination during the FTP exchange. So here we will filter for FTP and we see all of the packets. Now, in order to find the password that has been leaked, we have to expand the FTP protocol arrow here and look at the details. Let's see. Now, as you can see here, in packet number 20, we see the user elf maxkd trying to log in. Request command user request argument elf max kitty. The next packet, the next packet is packet 22. Here the server is challenging the user for the password. Please specify the password. Now, if you look at the next packet, we see that the uh, packet number 28, that the password that has been sent or provided by the user is plain text password fiasco. And this is your password. Okay, now continuing with our analysis of PCAP 2.PCAP, what's the name of the protocol that is encrypted? Without looking at the capture file, uh, since we're analyzing FTP traffic in the PCAP file too, so it's pretty self explanatory to uh, uh, provide SSH as an answer since it's the encrypted version of the FTP protocol. Next one. Analyze pcap 3pcap and recover the Christmas. So here, what's on Elf Max Kitty's wish list that will be used to replace Elf Mac Eager? Okay, so here we have to find some plain text details. Let's load Wireshark. Uh, let's load pcap 3 and click on X. So since we're looking for plain text details, we have to look for a protocol that transfer traffic in plain text. So it's either FTP or HTTP. But first we will look through HTTP. If we find the answer, then we're good. If we don't find the answer, we will skip through, we'll skip to FTP. 
So to filter traffic for to display only HTTP traffic, we have to type HTTP, which is the name of the protocol. We see only four packets that ha have been exchanged. So we see here the IP that ends with 219 sends uh, get requests as marked here by the details to host that ends with 210 in packet 166. If you go down, we see a couple of exchange traffic between these hosts. So in order to find the uh, wish list, we have to look at the response. Okay, the HTTP response. Why? Because the HTTP response contains the page that has been requested and the page contains plain text. So if we're looking here for plain text details, we have to look at the post request. So post requests are in packets number 168 and packets number 395. So looking at the packet number 168 and expanding through the details of the request and uh, response, we see here, uh, we see it's, uh, this is a response code. And if we scroll down to find details about the response, the page that has been returned. So see here in this line, this is the uh, paragraph returned from the page. Hello, fellow elves. We're currently recruiting for the positions listed below. If you scroll down, okay, this marks the end of the request. Fine. Now, in order to make your analysis efficient, we can e export the HTTP objects. So exporting the HTTP objects will export all of the files that have been transferred in the exchange process. So we go to edit, uh, export. I think I forgot where it was. So export um, HTTP. And here we see two files. Okay. Now I have already done that. All you have to do is to just click on save all and you will have the files. Now, if you go back to my desktop, this is the Christmas.zip file. If you open it, we see here a couple of files, and among the files, we see Elf Max Kitty wishlist. You open that file, and we see here wishlist for Elf Max Kitty. Among the wishlist is the one that is to be replaced for Elf Mac Eager. So you copy that, and you provide this as an answer, and we're done. It was a nice challenge. Of course, not all of the Wireshark filters mentioned in this tutorial are all the Wireshark filters exist. If you want more details, just go to Wireshark uh, official website and take a deep dive at all of the filters that you can use in your daily analysis if you use Wireshark for analyzing packets on a daily basis. So that was for today and see you in the next video.